the most under the radar team so far in the first three weeks of the season. But we do want to see a close game. Uh -oh. We want to see how that Miami man, is going to react do? and yeah. are they going to get you know have the jitters a case of them again when they get in the fourth quarter. Well, it's about LeBron James and what yeah. he does. I mean, I'm not going to put this all on him in the last two ball games because as a team they have two assists in the last two fourth quarters. So it's a team thing, but LeBron James has got to play better at the end of the ball games because if this festers and goes until June. And NBA Friday now continues from Tebow Town, formerly known as Denver, Colorado. Yes, there are other athletes and pro sports played here. And we got a pretty good game in the Pepsi Center tonight as the 83 Miami Heat with Dwayne Wade, LeBron James. In town to take on the 7-4 Denver Nuggets, top two scoring teams in the NBA. We're looking for the continuation of NBA Friday. I'm 60 years old, and you know, I'm close to 2,000 games. And, you know, I was up at 5.15 this morning. I mean, I went to bed at midnight watching video, and we got up at 5.15, you know. And, you know, a lot of that is Miami. A lot of that is LeBron. A lot of that is Pat Riley and my past history with him. Uh, you know, there's just certain guys that turn on the switch faster. And this is one of them. And you like the style that they're playing. I really do. And more importantly, George Carl loves his team. they got some nice youth, some depth. Two plays to really watch is Ty Lawson and Danilo Gallinari. Two of their foundation guys moving forward. Lawson, the point guard who took over the Chauncey Bills trade last year. And Gallinari, of course, one of the big pieces of the Carmelo Anthony trade at the deadline last year. The Miami starting lineup, you have the big three. Dwayne Wade playing with a foot injury that Heather Cox will detail for us in a minute. And they're bracketed by Mario Chalmers and Joel Anthony. Meantime, for the Nuggets coming off a big win on Wednesday night here, it is Ty Lawson, Aaron Aflalo, who's so good at so many things with this Denver team. Gallinari, Nene, and Timofey Moskov from Russia, the other part of that Carmelo Anthony deal. Well, we mentioned one and two in scoring in the NBA. Nice pitch out by Nene, and Aaron Aflalo hits the three, and a response quickly to James. And that is a way to end a 9-0 run. Touchdown pass like they did last year against the Pacers. That was 96 feet, not 94, because <laughs> he was out of bounds. But Eric, <laughs> Eric Spolster talked about that, Mike, pregame. Here we go. D. Wade, only one foot out of bounds <laughs> in Tebow's town. <laughs> no goaltend was called. Couple of blocks from Timothy Mozgov. The lob from James to Wade. The way with Haslam to Wade. Shane Battier running to the corner, but Wade steps through for two. You know, Nene was their free agent that had to have. They signed him back. And then Dallas, who's trying to clear some cap space for next summer, they basically handed Rudy Fernandez and Corey Brewer. And now you have those two players essentially replacing Jarrah Smith. Right, exactly. Foul on the nay inside. As he got the bump and Bosch gets his second field goal both here in this oh. call. It's Wade with a follow. Dwayne wanted the foul, wasn't called. Oh, he kept it alive on a beautiful feed to Cole and it's a one point game. In transition, take some of a casual layup. Thought he was fouled. I thought Cole was open. Does not give up on the play. Saves it to Norris Cole. And it's the buzzword for each coach tonight. The top two scoring teams in the league. Get out and get moving. And Chris Mullen, the Nuggets did to build a 14-point lead and then the back end of the second quarter. And George Cole wants them to go even faster, Mike. He wants an ABA pace. <laughs> the old Nuggets from the ABA. I love it. I love the style. We have a great game here. Push the tempo. Share the ball. Great team play. And you thought, Chris, this was a really interesting night to watch Miami. All over Lodo, lower downtown Denver today. 15s, people in orange. The Tim Tebow phenomenon. And what do you do with the old Carmelo Anthony jersey? He turned into a Tebow jersey. Heather Cox, the uh, Miami Heat, and their star player in the Tebow conversation. Indeed, it's Tebow mania even in the Miami locker room. LeBron James, before the game, talked about how he can relate to what Tim Tebow is going through. Then I overheard in the locker room as he was getting stretched the music he was listening to before the game, and it was a rapper. His name, Rick Ross, guys, if you follow this. Now, it's a Tebow-inspired <laughs> rap song, and it's ironic for many reasons. The part LeBron was singing out loud, quote, 
Thought I wouldn't make it. Now I'm winning Timothy Tebow. Fourth quarter, I'm back. Fourth quarter, in fact. Fourth quarter, that's that. Now, Mike, I can honestly say I never thought I'd be reciting rap lyrics yeah. during a game. To the end of the bench. And if you've turned ankles in your life, turn away. Because if you've turned ankles, it hurts every time you watch somebody else. Mm. Yeah. He'd actually have a couple of days off as they return to South Florida after this five game. Heard McHale and Parrish. <laughs> LeBron with a big performance, 35 points. But Denver's 55% shooting. The headline story here tonight as the Nuggets move to 8-4 and, and the Heat fall to that same record. Gallo. Hall of Famer, good being with you. My pleasure, Mike. What a you, great game. You do more than hit shots, I guess, huh? No lockout legs tonight for Denver. They had it going. They, they did. That's right. Nice flow. That's I right. love it. It's nice to watch basketball like this. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Up and down. With Hall of Famer Chris Mullen, Heather Cox, and our great ESPN team, Mike Tirico. Enjoy a great weekend of sports action. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night from Denver. Might be a mention of Tebow, the Nuggets, and the Dolphins coaching situation. And all the NBA highlights on SportsCenter right now. The Heat went 0 for California in their last two games, losing in Oakland and then in Los Angeles. And then Friday, they wrapped up their five-game road trip. Yeah, things to do in Denver when you're dead tired. There's a lot of that going on in the league this season. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade doing their pregame ritual. Heat and Nuggets, the top two scoring teams in the NBA this season. One team would outscore the other in this one. Aaron Afalo really? with a three. <laughs> uh, Wade, a, oh, you know who that reminded everybody of in Denver? That... Craig Morton. <laughs> You're going to get enough Tebow references in this show. <laughs> Wade to James there. We do a legal flashback. February. Wade, James. This one was it. That one was an alley oop. Back to Friday. This one, not so much alley, but, uh, but still some oop there. 90 feet. Nice arm by Wade. Uh, third quarter. Well, I check, actually, that's the, that's the same play again. Wade falling as he throws the ball. That's like a 30-yard pass. Yeah, that's like 30 times we showed it, too. Third quarter, <laughs> Nuggets up five. Ty Lawson, a foul blocked by James. Lawson got the loose ball, lays it in, draws the foul. Nuggets were up five after three. They went on a 12-1 run to open the fourth quarter. That hurts, and so does that. Wade falls down, ankle bends awkwardly. You can see right there the right ankle. He would not return. Uh, Neither would the Heat. Lawson beats the shot clock, and it's 117-104 Denver. Well, it's deja vu for the Heat, who, who started off hot and then cooled off dramatically in each of the last two seasons. Big part of their drop-off is defense. Over, over, the, over the last seven, they've allowed over 100 points per game, including 117 on Friday. Yeah, it's going to be real slow for a while. So, um, you know, unfortunately, when the bug hits you, it hits you. So, um, you know, just continue to get therapy. Nothing I can do. You know, stuff like that happens in sports. As you look at the things that are happening late in games, are there things that you can pinpoint as a group and correct, or is there a concern that's beginning to grow? I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of stuff you can pinpoint. Yeah. But, um, you know, we're just getting a lap, get back to, uh, you know, um, Get back to looking at film, you know, see what our coaches got for us. And we'll come back in when it's time to, to get ready to continue to play.